I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Digital. Maserati, Rick, and Detroit. The Convertible bird in Miami. Yeah, Miami yo. Graduated summa cum laude. Strip club made a tsunami. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. Falcone with the cocaine. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Larry Davis from Close Range. Kill Rich. I can get this ransom money for Sonny Mac. You got 14 bricks right there? Yeah. Who's you up, eh? Yes. Why did I kill Rich? <laughs> like I said to you before about the coke. Rich. Rich. Was lying to me about something that I felt he had no reason to lie to me about. And in my mind, it told me that if he could let this little bit of money come to me when I thought was a beautiful relationship, friendship, then no telling what he was selling me down the line for. I gave him the opportunity to tell me the truth, not once, but twice. Quit you up, eh? Yeah, man, but look, dude, once we get my little brother back, man, we write the fuck back on, baby. We write the fuck back on once I get some business. <laughs> So when I came with the plan with my little man, and I said if he lied to me, then we just gonna do what I said. That's what happened. From knowing Rich Porter personally. <laughs> to get out the game, to... You know, because to me, like, he was considered, and, you know, the way I looked at it, he was like the coolest dude on the street in that moment. And if he could get touched, you know, and, 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 and the violation to his family, then anyone could. That was like, that's what the one, the thing I learned, the reason why I made the movie, if, if you look at Paid in Full, I didn't make it to glor glorify it. I, I made it to, be, to really showcase the fact that, you know, for you have a run and you're rolling and you get addicted to it, and then you and people you love suffer. So I kind of made people, I, 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 it made me not, that situation made me never want to hustle again. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I was hoping it had that impact That's on right. everyone else. The learning experience that you could be a cool dude, the coolest dude, be on top, everybody, you know, you know, on your side, and people you love could get hurt. And that's, that, is that game worth it, you know? And that's what I learned. Yeah. It's like when I asked Jay Black. I but what like, I could say is he had a, in, in that situation, sure. he had a cool head. He, yeah. Yeah, he was. Cause I asked Jay Black about him. I was like, how was like, whether well, his personality was he cool? He was like, yeah, he was real. Not nah, cool. Dude, Rich was a cool. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good people. Like I wasn't around him like that. Like I knew people that was around him and like that kind of thing. Yeah. But um, um, when I was around and was around him, yeah, he was a cool. Man. Wow. He was everything that everybody. He should. He deserves to be a legend for sure. Wow. It ain't like you wouldn't be disappointed. <laughs> like okay. if you were able to be on one of them blocks and be able to witness seeing one of the motherfuckers drive by. Like I got to see all that. That's why I'm burnt out. I got to see them niggas swag and all that shit and how they, you know, how they conducted themselves firsthand. Dapper Dan Fitz. Just all of that. You know, just the whole the way you carried that kind of power. Right. There was a swag to have with it. You know what I'm saying? To survive that shit, it's like you had to really be cool to surf through it. So Dapper Dan was really cracking back in the day for y'all. Like that was just where everybody used to go get fit. Yeah, but then that was rap. I'm talking about that like deep Harlem shit that nobody else saw. Like, you know, like Willie Burgers and shit like that. Rooftop, you know what I'm saying? Boosty B and shit like that. Man. You know, the rink, you know, the Apollo on Tuesdays and shit. Rink on Wednesdays and Saturdays, you know. Rooftop on Fridays and all that type of shit. The chilies. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of that, the gambling spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. We back. It's your boy, Papa La Maptas. We on our way to New York with it. Uptown. Harlem. Where we gonna cover none other than Harlem's golden boy, Richard Porter. But everybody know him as Rich. Now, a little bit about Rich. He died in 1990 at the age of 25. He had a decent run in the game. It was said that he was a hustler's hustler. I want to say that they say he started out selling newspapers. And then he transitioned to weed after that. And then after that, sky was the limit. He 
really got his, I want to say, big start in the game with a friend of his named L.A. from Sugar Hill in Harlem. Anybody familiar with Harlem? All my niggas from Sugar Hill, Harlem niggas, y'all to get in the comment box, let it be known. Um, yeah, so he got in the game with L.A. By all accounts, not too long after that, L.A. was killed. Um, who knows what that was in regards to. But it wasn't much longer after that when he linked up with AZ and Alpo. Um, I want to say Alpo was on the east side. And they pretty much went on to form something special. What we seen in the paid in full movie that was depicted. Um, really, it's it's hard to find anybody that's going to say anything bad about Richard Porter. I guess you can say Alpo when Alpo said that he lied to him about a certain price or a certain number of units that he was getting from Richard Porter. He said he killed Richard Porter because Richard Porter lied to him about something that shouldn't be lied, that he shouldn't have lied about. So in turn, he murdered him, or he alleged that he had some hitters from D.C. go to New York with him, and they murdered Rich. They dumped him near Orchard Beach, but not long before, not long before Rich was murdered, his 12-year-old brother Darnell was kidnapped on his way to PS92. Um, that was December, uh, I want to say 89 or towards the tail end of 89. After Rich was essentially murdered, the kidnappers, um, who turned out to be none other than Clarence Preacher Heatley um, and the Preacher crew, who Richard Porter's uncle Al Apple ended up being down with, and he had some kind of hand in the kidnapping of Darnell. When they realized that they couldn't get any ransom money after Richard Porter was found dead, they ended up dumping Darnell's body not far from where Richard Porter was dropped off. I ain't going to give up the whole story. Um, I'm going to let y'all read a little bit about the news article for 1990. It's your boy Popolite. Mob, 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 ties. The body of a kidnapped 12-year-old boy whose finger was cut off and sent to his mother in December to pressure them into sending ransom money was found Sunday afternoon. Wrapped in plastic bags off the Hutchinson River Parkway in the Bronx, the police say yesterday. The body of Darnell Porter of 155 West 132nd Street in Manhattan was found on a bicycle path near the Parkway City Island exit by a homeless man looking for cans, Lieutenant Raymond O'Donnell, a police spokesman, said. It was less than a mile from where the body of his older brother, Richard, whose police said was a crack dealer the kidnappers wanted to pay the ransom, was found shot to death. On January 4th, Darnell's body was inside 14 black plastic bags stuffed one inside the other. It was clothed in clean white sneakers, blue jeans, and a white shirt. The body was badly decomposed but not cut up or dismembered, Lieutenant O'Donnell said. Darnell was kidnapped the morning of December 5th as he walked the four blocks from his home to Public School 92. For 48 hours, his abductors tried to extort as much as $500,000 from his 25-year-old brother, Richard Porter, the police said. On the second day, the kidnappers cut off the boy's right index finger and left it in a coffee cup in the bathroom with a minute-long tape of the child pleading with his family to pay the ransom. Get the money. They cut my finger off, William. They cut my finger off, Darnell's voice said. Shaking on the tape, a police official said, Please help me. Get the money. I love you, Mommy. On January 4th, Richard Porter was found shot to death near the Orchard Beach Park, less than a mile from where Darnell's body was found Sunday. He was shot several times in the head and chest, and the police found $2,239 in his pocket. 
detectives have speculated that Darnell was kidnapped because of his brother's drug dealing and that Mr. Porter was trying to negotiate without the help of police when he was killed. They said Mr. Porter sold about $50,000 worth of crack a week. He was convicted of drug possession in April 1984 and of weapons possession in November of 1984. The investigation is focusing on rival drug dealers and those who extort from them. On January 16th, a drug dealing associate of Mr. Porter's was found shot to death at 149th West 130, 132nd Street. Stanley Harvey, 24 years old, of 716 St. Nicholas Avenue, was found dead of several bullet wounds on the fifth floor of an abandoned building. Investigators believe the three killings may be connected. Investigators say they are looking for a 1989 two-door black Nissan with the New York license plate number 7HL209 in which Richard Porter was seen in Harlem the evening before his body was found. Pathologists will try to determine whether Darnell was killed before or after his brother was, crying on the phone. Darnell's mother, Velma Porter, 44, discovered her son was missing at 4 p.m. on December 5th when he did not come home from school. At 5 p.m., she received the first of seven telephone calls with Darnell crying on the phone. A caller believed to be a male asked for $500,000 in ransom, but Miss Porter said they could not afford the ransom. The next day, a caller told the family to go to the nearby McDonald's restaurant. A family friend found two rings there that belonged to Darnell, a cassette tape, and a two-inch piece of an index finger. The last contact with the family that the police know was made on December 10th, police officials said, when a woman handed a note to a child in Upper Manhattan and told him to deliver it to Darnell's aunt. The note said the boy was in pain and needed medical attention.